A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. InshaAllah what we discussed from last night on the levels of the heart in the way of the openings of Muharram and these are important to remember again and to focus that <coughs> the love of these Divinely Presence and the love of the Holy Prophets come to us and the level of the student is going to be known to us. So that when Sayyidina Adam Salam begins to come and Allah want to dress you from the Adamic reality, you're going to go through a phase of extreme crying. extreme remorse why that's important so that we understand did we go through that did we feel a remorse and a sadness a repentance for from this life you gave me what did i do with it how did i waste it how did i throw it how did i do all of these horrible things in it and until that remorse doesn't overtake the servant in which their zero point energy, their istighfar and tawbah is so intense that always crying, always crying, always crying until the reality and the bab of forgiveness can open. The gate of forgiveness has to open for that servant in which Allah grant for them their maqfirah, their forgiveness. As a result we said that door and that Adamic door of forgiveness is a two-way door. When Allah forgive the servant it's the beginning of Divine knowledges. So then you begin to, if you went through that phase of remorse and crying and tears just coming and feeling that you need to be in sujood asking Allah forgiveness, that gate of forgiveness is the opening of knowledges in which the hikmah and the wisdom of the shaykh's teachings become known to you in your heart, you understand it. Otherwise you just, what are these people talking about? And the heart is dead from the dunya, just thinking about how I'm going to go back and do my work and I wonder what my bank account has right now in it because the heart is dead. The Station that Sayyidina Nuh comes because people have to have the synopsis, did you go through crying? That way when we make our episode it's titled is Crying and then Sayyidina Adam comes. That's an Adamic tajalli that you are an Adam that came onto this earth. Have you forgotten your paradise reality and you're really enjoying it here? You have forgotten who you are. And when Allah give you the remembrance of who you are, oh you can't stop crying. That I did all these things and I wasted all this breath I have and now in my older age I have to try to, to figure that out. And that's why they say, blessed are the young ones who come towards deen because they have less time that they did wrong and more time to do all these good deeds that Allah want to dress them with. Sayyidina Nu comes into our life and when you know that Sayyidina Nu's tajalli is dressing you, it's the building of faith. So did anybody come and tell you, why you got to look like this? Your parents send you pictures of inappropriate clothing and say, why can't you look like that, why can't you be like this? And then people come and tell you, why you have this clothes like this, why you, you, you have to wear this cone on your head and eh, ridicule everything that you're doing. Did you get there yet and thought you were unique, that they're bothering only you? This is a tajalli from Sayyidina Nuh salam. And if you're not there means then implement your faith, do not compromise what you believe. Many situations you find a friend 
And for some reason you think, oh I came to Islam I should be soft, maybe I'm going to compromise. Every time I meet with them I'm going to take less of my things, I'm not going to show more of my body, I, I don't want to offend them. But that's shaitan because they don't do that for you. They don't say, oh I'm going to go see my Muslim friend, let me put a hijab on and come over. I'm going to go see these Muslim people, I'm going to bring halal meat for me and, and <laughs> say, come on I want to eat halal with you. They don't compromise what they do to be with you. So shaitan is whispering to you, take your belief down. Why you want to bother them? Why you worried about them? And somebody going to bother you? Worry about Allah and this reality of Sayyidina Nuh This is a struggle for faith. Every time you compromise in, in your understanding and your belief, you are slowing the process of your faith and if you compromise enough you will have never achieved iman and faith. And the servant won't go past the bab at tawbah and begin to wither away and the uloom and the knowledge because this has to keep moving. This is not you got it and you, you finished the finish line, Allah going to now push and push the testing more. So you see your, your faith has to be tested. They have to come and grab and say, why you have to have this? They say, because this is the way it's going to be. And as you're being tested and pushed and pushed into your faith, your faith is growing. The day you compromise it, it's withering and going away. So it means then the istiqam, istiqamu fi tariqah, I think we described in Surah Al-Jinn. That Allah looking, be firm on what you believe. Otherwise, winds are coming and what's the song? How'd you read one? Dust in the wind, all we are is dust in the wind. Because <laughs> what happens? You're not grounded on anything. The wind will come and blow you away. That which you love and that which you're firm on, you've been to, through many tests to stop it now. And the firmness of the faith gets rooted within the soul. So that's why they describe awliyaullah, they're like evergreen trees, they're not flowers, they're not bushes. But Allah has rooted their faith from what you see of the greenness of their evergreen, their roots go all the way down deep into paradise that hold them to be firm. And as a result Allah describes them in Surat Al-Mulk that they're awtad. They are the pegs of this earth, that they're so deeply rooted in their faith they can keep the earth from its oscillations and its shakings because of the firmness of their faith and what Allah has tested them. Then Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Musa come into our lives that now that your faith is strong these two prophets deal with fire. So Nabi Musa comes into our life and says, now Allah's freed you from the sea and parted the sea for you. But the other side was much more intensive training. Because when Nabi Musa, was, Nabi Musa when reached to the Promised Land, that's when they had to burn the gold, he had to open up the earth and throw his nation who were cheating into the earth. It didn't stop the test, they just intensified. So that this burning bush of ishq and muhabbat and love, Allah want to deposit this fire within your heart. But this fire is going to burn everything and that's when the Sufi kalams begin to talk about the moth to the flame. This flame Allah going to begin to present to you this flame of Divinely Presence. And Allah instructing awliyaullah to teach you that go into the flame and everything is going to burn. Don't circumambulate it and keep trying to avoid these testings and these difficulties but whatever your fate is, face it. Go into that flame. So then their life becomes extreme testing. 
testing from every direction, anger of people, everything because Sayyidina Ibrahim comes and teaches of Nimrod that now every Nimrod of earth will throw a flame at you. At this flame that hitting you is the waswas of shaitan, the attack of shaitan, everything leave this, leave these practices, leave these people, find every single thing wrong because the flame is shaitan. There's not a real fire, no, nobody can throw matches at you. The flame is a shaitan coming from every direction. Shaitan hit your kids, they come and fight you. Hit this person, they come and fight you. Shaitan because he knows you're guarded. So begin to hit flames everywhere and these flames running towards you like those horror movies. When they light somebody up and that guy all of a sudden is coming after you, ah, he's on fire too. Why? Because shaitan knows, I can make everything angry around you. You may be guarded by Allah but I'm going to throw fire on all of these and they're going to run after you. So it means that mushkilat comes so much unto you that when Allah is going to test you to make you or break you. Are you going to let these things jump on you and then make you to be fiery? Means then you stopped your fight, you stopped fighting for Allah and you surrender to the fire. You decided, I'm going to be fiery too and I'm going to fight them and fight them and fight them and fight them and I became them and I became fiery and I lost my Divinely character. I don't know what this faith is anymore, I don't know what this practice is, I don't know who that guy is anymore. And then that became a Narani existence and they didn't achieve that maqam. But what Allah want is what? قُلْ يَا النَّهْرُ كُنِي بَرْدًا وَالسَّلَامًا عَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمٌ that say to this fire, be cool and peaceful means their practice is strong, their muraqabah is strong, their zikrs are strong and they understand the shaitan coming from everywhere. They know how to go into a lock-up mode, they know how to cut a communication. If somebody not talking right to them, they cut them off in an instant. They can wait two, three days before they talk to them again because they know you're coming with a fire towards me and I'm not… Uh, somebody normal, I know what you're trying to do and shaitan who's behind you trying to do. So means they're trained, they understand when things are, are, are trying to come to them to make them to burn. And they did their muraqabah, they do their muraqabah, they know how to immediately go into their connection and as a result they put a shield out that, that makes it to be cool and peaceful for them because everything around screaming but they have to be in a station of Bardan wa salaman, cool and peaceful. So the whole world will be going up. So then they say there's peace in the eye of the storm. Allah make a tufan, if the tufan come, tornado comes and threw you into it also, what would be the benefit? You're just a part of the whole tornado now. But the firmness in these practices is that my life became difficult but my love for Prophet intensified. As a result I feel the coolness in the eye of the storm. So whomever out there having a immense difficulties and ashaqeen, keep your connection, push away the shaitans and know that their, their job is to throw fire at you and your connection with Prophet and awliyaullah, that's when you should be using your madad because the next level that begin to open Sayyidina Isa salam comes, right? Sayyidina Isa comes for what? To teach you that how we're going to rise now to the heaven. If Allah accepted your struggle and continuous fight against difficulty, fight against bad character, the Ya Rabbi I'm overwhelmed by the shayateen, grant me a najat, grant me a salvation, grant me your support and Allah say, we will raise you to our presence. And at that time Allah will begin to give that servant their ethereal reality in which every time difficulties come they don't stop but they have a ethereal reality in which they can go to a higher place and a better place. And as a result they have very beautific experiences with their soul. 
so that the struggle of dunya is… becomes beatific. The energies that Allah dress them with become beatific, give them energy and hope and all sorts of beatific lights so they can go back down for another day of whatever this dunya is going to bring to them. But Sayyidina Isa has to come to them to begin to teach. That was all from the muraqabah that, come now and leave the body. When it's in these difficulties connect with your connection, connect and come into this ocean of light, oceans of power and to be dressed by these realities as a result of the servant reaching these levels of effacing and testing, effacing and testing, then the akhfa reality is then to be brought into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad Because you've destroying all these characteristics and what is left of this beatific characteristic, Prophet they want to bring us into the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad so that to completely annihilate your presence into my light I take you to Allah That's the reality of Muhammadun Rasul. So Muhammadun Rasul you have to come into his heart as nothing, as no one. And that what would the Rasul show you is Allah, Muhammadun Rasul Allah. So not the Allah we understood with all the bad character but the one in which annihilates and there's nothing left and enter into the reality into the fana of Sayyidina Muhammad and at that time Prophet is taking your light and bringing you into the presence of Allah, Allah, Allah. And that's why in the principles of Naqshbandiya because it's a guide for shaykhs is then when you're teaching the student the zikr of Allah that's only at that level. The real zikr of Allah is when you've annihilated in that reality and you've annihilated your existence into the oceans of Muhammadun Rasulullah and that Prophet is bringing you in to where I make dhikr of Allah bring your soul and where I make dhikr and don't be heedless in that ocean. So then all these realities, these are openings of Muharram. That's why we eagerly wait for Muharram that, Ya Rabbi grant us from these lights, grant us from these blessings that we've struggled for years. May you open a light from this, we struggled for years under this type of testing, open for us from these realities. We pray that Allah dress us and bless us from the immensities of Muharram and grant us forgiveness and, and tawbah, maghfirah, every repentance to be accepted and grant us the ishq and love and muhabbat of Sayyidina Muhammad and grant us the love of holy companions and Ahlul al Bayt and awliyaullah fi samahi wa fil ard inshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.